Now over the years I've taught many people that you would call all the gear, no idea. And I've seen people spend an absolute fortune on equipment because they think that that equipment is going to make their shots better. Now, knowledge is power. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this camera here, which is the Canon EOS 1200D with a standard 18 to 55 kit lens. They've discontinued these cameras, but you can pick them up on eBay for around £150. And we might also be using a £20 reflector. We're going to be doing a portrait shoot today. And after that, I'm going to go to an uninspiring area and take some more shots. This video is all the idea and no gear. Okay, let me introduce Emily here. She's going to be our model for this video, for the uh, portrait part of this video. And the first shot that we're going to take is underneath here in this car park where it's quite dark, all right? So that will really put the camera to the test when it comes to, well, noise really and on ISO. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Let's do it. So the first shot that I'm going to take with this 1200D um, is I want to get all of these lines converging into the model here. It's a good test for this camera because we're in the dark. I am shooting on manual, fully manual here. I am putting the shutter speed on 1 100th of a second. The aperture I'm putting on its widest that it can go, which is f4.5 currently on this. Um, I'm leaving the ISO on auto and that's to pick up the slack. So the shutter speed, I need to be quick because I'm hand holding. So one hundredth of a second is probably, you know, your limit there. It'd be nice to go lower, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it at one hundredth of a second. Um, and the ISO here is flickering between 1600 and oh, it's staying on 1600, oh, 3200, yeah, that's what it was. So it's between 1600 and 3200, the ISO, which is quite high. I'm also shooting in RAW. Um, I'm gonna put the, the white balance on auto white balance as well. Right, that's all the technical jargon done. Let's take some shots. Emily, do you mind just walking backwards, please? And let me just see, get the composition that I want. Okay, I want you to walk towards me, Emily, nice and confident. Here we go. Other thing that I just want to mention is that actually that did quite well being sort of a low end camera. You would expect the focusing to be slower, the processing power of the camera to be slower, but that actually coped quite well. As a matter of fact, it didn't slow down. It didn't stop. I am shooting fully raw. So first thing that's done all right there. Now I'm going to try and do some headshots under here and it's really dark. So I'm going to try and do some like cropped in headshots. I'm going to use the reflector, maybe bounce some light back in, and some catch lights in there. Um, yeah, so let's give that a go, all right? So what I'm going to do for this shot is use a silver reflector here, 20 pounds-ish off of Amazon, wherever you want to get them. I will put a link in the description for it. These are well handy to have. We are under a strip light because obviously it's bright. And I'm going to use this silver reflector to reflect light back up into the model's face and in particular create 
what's called a catch light. It'll give a sparkle to the eyes, all right? I am still on manual, one hundredth of a second, the widest aperture that I can go on. And now my ISO is a little bit lower than what it was before. It's at about 800, ISO 800, which is much better. Um, all right, let's take some shots. Again, composition, you know, it was all about knowledge. This is all you, knowing about photography is much more powerful, if you like, or much more important than the equipment that you've got. So I am again using these lines and this sort of this really cool venue to enhance the look of the model, all right? We have to move because these lights are on sensors, so we have to do a little dance to get the lights back on again. Okay, here we go. I like that one. Yeah. I've just seen a picture there, it's got a bit of camera shake on. Now, you know, I want to keep the shutter speed as slow as possible to allow as much lighting as possible, but you risk camera shake. Now I'm shooting at one one hundredth of a second. Most of the shots have actually come out all right, but there's a couple there of a slight bit of camera shake. Now there's a few things that you can do. You can up the shutter speed. If you up the shutter speed, the ISO is going to increase, so you're going to increase noise, right? So you, you know you've got to balance it out. But off, I'm all right with 100th of a second, even when I'm zoomed in a little bit. Be careful when you're doing it yourself. Just check your own steadiness, if you like. All right. Some people can handhold it at 60th of a second, and good luck to you if you can do that. I can't. I need to be 100, 125th, or more and also zooming in and out is going to affect that as well. The more you're zoomed in, the more likely you are to get camera shake. Um, we're happy with that, aren't we? Yep. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to take some shots outside, if you like, where it's a bit more brighter. Let's go. Okay, so we've come outside now. Obviously it's a lot brighter, so we haven't got to worry that much about ISO out here. I'm going to now put the camera onto AV this time. Again, I'm going to shoot at its widest aperture because we're doing portraits and it's currently giving me F5 when I'm zoomed in. So I'm going to shoot at a focal length of around about 35 mil, which is zoomed in, which is what you should be doing for portraiture anyway. And the ISO is giving me 100 here. The shutter speed is about 1 to 50th of a second, which is absolutely perfect. I'm going to use this line here to lead me into the model, into Emily here. Emily's made a little change of her clothes to suit the scene as well. And uh, yeah, let's do some shots. You ready, Emily? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, focus. I'm gonna to need to come back a little bit, actually. For this one. Focus and shoot. So, I just took them pictures. Now let's go to a different location. I've got another idea um, and take some more shots, all right? So I've got this other idea. There's kind of like a sign, no parking, that's been painted onto the concrete here. Um, I am gonna stick to aperture priority mode and put it on its widest aperture again. I'm gonna zoom in this time. 
probably to around about 50 mil. I'm going to get low to the ground as well and shoot well pretty much off the ground to try and get this shot. Some pictures of the model standing, some pictures of the model sitting and with the no in the shot, all right? Uh, so yeah, the widest aperture it's given me now when I'm zoomed into 50 mil is f5.6. The ISO is coming out at 100, shutter speed's coming out at one two hundredth of a second that's absolutely fine so uh, let's give this a go Okay, well done Emily, that's good, that's good. Now we are going to do another idea, the last idea that I've got for this portrait shoot. All right, so let's go and do that, Emily. So I'm in another location now. We've got uh, Emily now dressed in black with some black sunglasses and this silver grid metal thing in the background all right now I'm going to go for a shot using symmetry as my uh, composition and frame Emily in the middle of this grid right as for the camera I'm going to put the focal length between 30 and 35 mil which gives me equivalent of 50 mil on a full frame camera that is as your eye sees right that's so that's an as your eye sees look and it's a great look for portraiture, especially what I find is like that symmetrical type of portraiture. It really boxes things in lovely. So I'm gonna use that focal length. I'm gonna put it onto manual. I'm gonna put the shutter speed onto 125th of a second to make sure it's nice and quick. It's bright, obviously we're outside, so that's okay. I'm gonna put it on its widest aperture that I can at this focal length and that would be f4.5 the iso is coming out at iso 200 absolutely fine so that's the settings and all about this camera for this particular shot now let's take the shot So there is the portrait shoot with this 150 pound piece of equipment. Now we're gonna go somewhere else and do some landscape shots. So just to say thanks to Emily here, let's go over here to say thanks to Emily. Thank you, Emily, for being our model for today. Um, let's go and take some more shots with this camera, let's go. So we've come to this place here, which is actually around the back of some seafood processing factories. All right, so it's very industrial, not very pretty at all. So we've come here to see if I can get some decent shots. But before we take some shots here, let me tell you about the courses that we run over at theschoolofphotography.com. We've been teaching since 2002. We teach people all over the world photography in our online courses. We can teach you photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, studio lighting, anything photography related. We are professional, fully qualified teachers and I promise you, that I can make your photography go to the next level. Okay, let's go and take some shots. So I'm walking around this area and what I've seen is this pattern underneath this, um, I think it's like a conveyor belt where they churn out all the, uh, all the seafood into whatever, trucks or whatever, I don't know. But I really like that pattern and I'm going to try and get a shot of it. Try and get some sort of abstract looking pictures, all right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my focal length, well, it's somewhere in between 35mm and 55mm, which is 
really zoomed in. That's gonna compress the scene a bit and push it inwards. It's gonna help that abstract look. I'm gonna put it on my widest aperture possible. And for this shot, it is F5. F5 is the widest aperture possible. I'm currently on ISO 100 and it's giving me a shutter speed of 60th of a second. Now I think that that's a little bit too slow handheld. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go fully manual. I'm gonna put it onto F5. I'm gonna put my shutter speed onto 125th of a second and I'm gonna change my ISO accordingly to get a decent exposure, all right? ISO 400 seems to be about right. So I've got the exposure from fully manual. Exposure is 1 125th of a second. F5, ISO 400. Let's take some shots and see if I can get this really abstract look. I like that that's really really nice you know when you're in a place like this obviously that pretty picture is not going to happen but you can look for abstract kind of pictures and patterns is a really good thing to look for to get that kind of look So I found this other thing now, which is like a metal grid thing. I actually don't know what it is, but it looks really, really cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and focus on these, the foreground here, there's some bars here. I'm gonna focus on them. And then all of the background will hopefully go blurry. And again, it will create that kind of abstract look. Plus I quite like this metallic look on a, on a picture as well. So let's give this a go. This, for, for this shot, I'm gonna zoom right in. I'm putting on aperture priority because it's really quite bright out here. The ISO is on 100 and the shutter speed is coming out at 1 200th of a second. Absolutely fine, here we go. So that was that shot there. Now I can go on and on if I want to, but I think I've pretty much made the point that I wanted to make. Now the point of this video was to show you that knowledge is far more important than equipment. If you can't take decent shots with a camera like this, this is worth 150 pounds, second hand camera. You can't take decent shots with a camera like this. You can't take decent shots with any camera, all right? That is a fact. So let us know what you think in the comments of this video. Do you think that spending a lot of money really does help your photography? Or do you think that it's knowledge that's more important? You know, tell us your experiences as well. Just let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and so would other people. Other people would love to hear your comments um, on this video. Now in the description of this video, there is a link and that will take you to a page where you can see these pictures bigger and all the settings that I used for each of the shots and any editing that I did on any of the shots. You'll see that in that link. Just click on that, you'll go to the page, look at the pictures. Please like this video and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel, hit that bell button, all of them things. We can't bring you these videos unless you do all of them things for us. We really appreciate it. I love every last one of you that like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more at the School of Photography. Oh, 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 oh